Hi, welcome to the Film Crop channel. Today I'm going to explain about the 2009 sci-fi action movie called, Repo Men. Please support me with a like and a comment. That way you can help the channel grow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Year 2025. A guy named Remy looks out the window of a skyscraper and wonders what it would be like to be alive and dead at the same time. A young couple walks into the apartment and starts making love from the threshold. Remy appears very suddenly and takes them by surprise. The man apologizes and says he'll pay, but our hero says he's from another department. He knocks out first the man and then the girl who is trying to beat him with an electric shock. Remy cuts open his clothes and then his stomach, from which he pulls out an iron device. The thing is, in this future, people can take organs on credit. And as with any loan, if you don't pay, the bank takes it away. That's what our hero does. He takes the organs of debtors. In the morning he wakes up in the company of any family, wife and son. He takes his son to school and kisses his forehead. So you wouldn't know that this man was ripping organ implants out of a debtor's body that night. And there's work ahead. Wherever the man is, in the elevator, in the bathroom, at work. They all tango horizontally on their way to the next world. He goes to his office, where people are offered organ loans. Remy catches a dialogue between the family and the company. It's about a pancreas. The amount offered for it is $600,000. There's obvious embarrassment on their faces, but the manager reassures them, they can offer them a loan, but if they delay paying for more than 96 days, the company will have to return their property. The manager asks them to check the boxes on the document. For himself and his family, he assures them. Remy makes himself a coffee and looks at this sad sight, but there is no emotion on his face. He walks into the workroom, where people like him gather. His colleague complains about getting the same ear orders. Remy reminds the guy of an incident on the subway he heard about. The guy walked up to a woman on the subway and poked her with a scalpel right there. Remy goes to turn in the selected implants and meets Jake, his old acquaintance and former classmate. They went to work there after the war and immediately fell in love with their occupation. They were a little embarrassed by their new job, but after all, it's all in the name of medicine. Together they go out on business, stopping by to see Carol, Remy's wife. She vainly begs our hero to move to the sales department, but he keeps making her false promises that he will definitely talk to his boss Frank. Jake convinces Remy that it is clearly his business to gut people, not to sell anything. Along the way, they notice a full man choking on fast food. Jake is willing to bet that he probably owes a debt to some organ and points a special device at him. That's right. In two days, he'll already be a debtor. Remy yells at the man to pay the loan or he'll come after him. The guy drops the food and runs away. Our hero and Jake arrive at the bar. Remy notices that the guy from the third company is on the list of debtors and asks Jake if he has gutted his acquaintances. He says his grandfather did. What can you do? A job is a job. Remy gets a look at the singer at the bar. She sings a touching song and Remy can't help but look at her. Our hero arrives home and is about to make love to his wife, turns on that very song from the bar, but she is not in the mood. Remy goes to his son to talk and he complains that he has been given a report about the ancient Romans, but he is repulsed by their cruelty. Remy makes excuses for the Romans, but seems to wonder about all this himself. Remy's family is having a little party at their house, and they invite everyone over for hot dogs. Jake approaches our hero and tells him that a debtor is getting a ride right to his house, and he needs Remy's equipment. The money is half and half. Our hero can't refuse such offers and lets him take his tools. Carol quickly figures out that Jake is up to something. Remy says his friend has gone out to get some meat, but his wife goes after him herself. A cab arrives at Remy's house. The driver finds out he has an expired kidney and calls Jake. Jake gets in the cab, knocks the man out, and performs the standard procedure. Carol sees all this, picks up Peter and gets in the car. Remy tries to stop her, but the woman is fed up with his job. Our hero watches the car drive away. Guess we'll have to talk to Frank after all. They are driving at night and Jake gets a message that there are debtors in a certain nest nearby. The men get there, but they are not welcome. A big scuffle breaks out. The guys shoot guns with electric charges, but then they still have to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The guys bring 32 organs from 18 carriers to Frank. Frank suggests they start their own business and do the same thing. Remy thinks it's a good time to talk about not wanting to do it anymore, but he's interrupted by Jake, who says they'll keep working for the company. Our hero rides with Jake in the car and his friend says that this world only keeps afloat because everyone abides by the rules, and it's exactly their responsibility to make sure that people abide by those rules. There's no way Remy can get his family out of his head. Jake says he saw a guy from the third company, and he said hi. But how on earth did he say hello, couldn't he kill a former friend? Jake says he took the organ, of course. A job is a job, as they tell each other. 
The last order of business for Remy was a musician our hero has listened to since he was a child. He has to take his heart. The man sits in his home studio. Remy goes to see him and sees that he is dabbling in some synthetic drug that he is rubbing into his gum. Together they finish his new track. The musician asks to hand over the flash card with the last completed song and voluntarily lies down under Remy's arms. Our hero is about to stop the implant with a defibrillator, but ends up flying off the musician's chest so hard that he loses consciousness. His taser is broken. Standing by his bedside are Frank and Jake, who plead with our hero. But about what? They try to tell him that he needs a new heart implant because his real heart is supposedly not working. Remy resists and tries to leave the building, but he gets so sick that he agrees to the surgery. Our hero comes home, but Carol no longer waits for him. She has changed the locks and put things out. Remy asks to get Peter, but his wife slams the door. Remy goes to see Jake, who greets him warmly. At work they give him a gift, a stripper in a big heart costume. Remy gets out on a new order and knocks out a client of the company. But as soon as it comes to removing the implant, he gets very lost. He finds it difficult to take a man's implant out there by killing him. After ordering, he goes to the bar, where Jake is already waiting for him in the company of their mutual acquaintances. His friend tells a story about a man who begged and cried for him to stop. Jake finds it amusing. Not really, Remy found it funny himself a few days ago. But now there was something different about him. It was as if something had clicked inside him, and the gears were working backward. Now he, like his son Peter, can't understand violence. But it's no longer about some ancient Romans, it's about something in the here and now. Remy is very short of money to pay his heart out. He's no salesman, but he can't be a ripper anymore either. He has three days left. Jake takes him with him to the Iron Cemetery, a neighborhood of people hiding from the Ripper. Jake is very angry that he can't carve anyone up at all. He wonders what is wrong with him. Remy has done this a thousand times. Jake tries to straighten him out, but only encounters his cold stare. He is faced with a very young boy, very soon his son might become one. So how can he kill him? The young guy runs away, and another man wakes up and knocks Remy out with something heavy. Our hero already doesn't mind losing his life here. When Remy wakes up, he walks through the Iron Cemetery area and sees a girl singing. The song sounds familiar to him. It is the girl from the bar that he had his eye on not too long ago. He picks up the girl and takes her to the hostel, trying to help her get off the drug she's been rubbing in her gums, just like the musician he's supposed to gut. Remy still has very little time left. He notices that the singer has an expired implant. After the girl goes through withdrawal, she starts beating on Remy, but soon notices for herself that he is in the same trap. At night Remy decided to erase the singer's file, but Jake caught him doing it. He says that if they send him after him, he will kill him too, because a job is a job. Remy comes to his son at night and kisses him on the cheek, our hero says he has somewhere to go. Remy goes to the girl's house and says they need to leave and packs his things. He burns down his car. Now it's just the two of them. Our hero and Beth arrive at the abandoned building. Remy says he has a heart implant and she has everything else. They find each other like two pieces of a puzzle. Frank comes to Jake and gives Remy an order, but he refuses. Meanwhile, Remy and the singer look around and find many things. At night, the girl tells him about her implants and later asks him to ask about her lips. She has them of her own. Remy takes the hint and kisses the girl passionately. Beth gives him a found typewriter and wishes him a happy birthday, even though his birthday is not that day, he accepts congratulations. Remy begins typing a sort of ripper confession every day and writes that work is not just work. Remy was a poet as a child, Maybe now is the time to realize it? Thanks to a hearing implant, Beth hears someone coming toward them. She plugs it into the implant and Remy hears it too. It's behind him. Remy makes a trap for the ripper and it falls into a hole in the floor. But the floor doesn't hold and Beth herself falls in as well. The ripper almost electrocutes her, but Remy drops the typewriter right on his head. Our hero takes his car and goes to get supplies. On the way, Beth fixes her broken leg. Or rather, her implant. Remy changes into a promoter's costume. It's a one lung costume. Funny thing is, the promoter himself is a smoker. He goes to the main office and talks to Frank, asking him to delete everything about him from the database, but his former boss says that his barcode trick has made things more complicated. Frank offers to pick a schedule where he could pay everything off, but Remy doesn't listen to him and still knocks him out with an electroshock. He grabs some organ jammers, hoping to pass with it at the airport so he can fly somewhere that doesn't have that damn organ company. Frank tells Jake the story of what happened, and he laughs. But for nothing, because now he's the one who has to kill his friend. The man he's been friends with all his life. Remy and Beth go through airport security, but the man checking the implants notices a jammer and calls someone. 
Beth's wound begins to bleed and they are led to an emergency room. Remy masterfully tosses the jammers in the trash. Rippers enter the emergency room, but Remy deals with them. When he tries to escape from the airport, Jake is in front of him, but he lets our hero through, not daring to attack his childhood friend. Beth says she knows where they need to go. They arrive at her old friend's house, who is in the business of reselling implants at half price. He takes them off fresh corpses and thinks he's Robin Hood. Her friend surreptitiously tosses her the powder, from which she got off with great difficulty, and having lost several organs while she was sitting on it. But he cannot help her, he no longer deals with the joints and sends the girl to another master, Alva, with whom the girl has bad memories. She almost got her killed once. Alva puts her under anesthesia and hands the case over to her nine-year-old daughter. She's been doing surgeries almost since birth, so she can be trusted, Alva assures her. When they leave, they notice that something is wrong with Beth's friend. The record is playing, even though it's long gone. Beth's friend is lying on his couch with his stomach ripped open. But the creepiest part is that someone turns on the speech implant remote and the dead man repeats his last lines before he dies. Jake comes out of the darkness. He says he can help him, but Beth will have to be dealt with. This is not an option for our hero. He tries to talk to the man he considers his friend, but after Jake veiledly tells him that he ruined the defibrillator that ruined Remy's life, our hero can no longer consider him his friend. They get into a fight, but they're both great fighters, as they were some of the best rippers. But Jake has been tough since he was a kid, and he beats our hero hard, hurling him against every wall in the room. Remy spits blood and laughs, because he's being killed right now by the man they grew up with and have been friends with all their lives. Jake starts laughing, too, but at the last moment Remy stabs him in the leg with a knife. Jake is about to drop something heavy on his head, but Beth takes his taser and knocks the bully out. Remy wakes up on the same floor from being woken up by Beth. The Rippers have broken into the compound and need to escape. It's like a mad race, with people running away in droves while the Rippers shoot at them. Beth is dragged into a bunker by someone, and Remy joins her. There are people sitting there, hiding from the Rippers. The leader in the bunker puts a gun to Remy's head and asks her to give one reason why she shouldn't pull the trigger. Our hero pulls up his sweater and shows her the scar on his chest. They are allowed to stay in the bunker, but Remy can't find peace for one second. He gets up and goes outside. Beth catches up with him and tells him that everything will be okay, but Remy replies that there is no way out. Beth is puzzled, what should they do then? Remy replies that they need to end the whole system. He sees Peter and Carol on the subway. Carol yells at him every second until Peter knocks his mother out with an electric shock. He's all about his father. Remy hands him his manuscript and tells him of some place he will be, and if his son wants to see him, he will have to go there. Remy sneaks into Frank's car and stuns him again. Now the hard part is getting into the company and destroying all the databases. Remy masterfully knocks out the guards and gets inside. To avoid running into the others, they turn down the first door they see, where the scientists are making implants. None of the scientists pay any attention to them, but one still suspects something is wrong and runs into the room. The crystal clear white room fills with scarlet blood. Remy runs down the hallway that leads to the pink room, which is filled with guards and other rippers, while Beth covers him from behind. Remy throws off his clothes and, in the best old boy tradition, walks down the hallway, chopping his former colleagues to pieces. Beth runs out of ammo, and Remy runs out of enemies. Jake enters the hallway, but Remy manages to run in with Beth and close that very pink door. Our hero realizes that there is no interface in the room, just a scanner. But to scan everything, they will have to sacrifice their implants. They didn't go there to escape again. Beth drives the scanner inside our hero and finds the right organ. She does now. He scans every organ of the girl while Jake and Frank stomp around near the entrance. Remy dissects every part of Beth's body and scans them one by one. The room fills with blood. To keep the girl from being in so much pain, he gives her a drug and lays her down on the table to continue dissecting her body. Jake and Frank enter the room right during the procedure. Our hero stands in tears and looks his friend straight in the eye. He asks him if it's worth it. Remy says it's worth more than all their business. Frank orders him to finish off our hero, but Jake kills Frank. Friends forever. A friend gives Remy a shot of adrenaline. That would seem to be it, but the voice asks for the organs to be inserted into the return container. Jake does what a true friend would do, he puts explosives in the container and blows the whole system to hell. Now no more rippers or debtors. They're free. After all these events, Remy went to the same place he told his son to go. He burned a ripper tattoo on his neck. He sits on the beach with Beth. Jake joins him. A friend picks up Remy's book, which his son Peter published. Mambo the Ripper. The friends discuss the book, but when Jake asks if he is in the book, he disappears from his seat. The screen flickers. What is it? 
It turns out that Remy can no longer function as a normal person, and after their last fight with Jake, he lost consciousness forever. They hooked him up to the neural machine Jake was talking about. Like, you fall asleep and have dreams for the rest of your life. He would have to pay for it for the rest of his life. Beth, though unconscious, is alive. Jake takes our hero's manuscript and chuckles. Remy sees the beach, his friend and Beth, while Frank talks someone into buying a neural machine on credit again. Such is the unhappy ending to this interesting story.